So let's talk about how we calculate percentage changes when we're calculating elasticities. We use a special formula called the midpoint formula. And this is a technique that we use to calculate percentage changes pretty much only when we're calculating elasticities. Now since an elasticity, any elasticity, you can give it a name, the B elasticity of A, for example, or you could think of price elasticity of demand. And that elasticity is always calculated as a percent change divided by a percent change. And this Greek letter delta always means change in. And always keep in the back of your mind that a percent means per 100. Then price elasticity of demand, since it's the first word in the elasticity, that is going to go in the denominator here. So percent change in price on the top would be the percent change in something having to do with demand. And what we really mean by that is quantity demanded. Real quickly, before we talk about the midpoint formula, let's compare it to the standard percent change formula that you have used previously in your life. So the standard percent change formula can be written simply this way. Take the new number minus the old or the original value, divide it by the original value, and multiply it times 100. A shortcut way to think about that is, instead of new minus old, just think about it as the change. How much is this value changing between the two numbers? And then divide it by the old number. And then of course, to make this into a percent, we have to multiply it times 100. Here's an example we can do in our head, basically. What if we're going from 100 up to 150? Well, since this blue bar, this original 100, can be divided into two 50s, what we're doing is we're going up 50. So that's the change. So the change would be 50. That's the numerator of our formula. Then we would divide that by the original number, the 100, which we see is 250s, and multiply that times 100. And that's going to be 50%. In other words, when you're going from 100 up to 150, you're adding half of the original value to itself, an increase of 50%. Now, the problem happens is what happens when we go from 150 back down to 100? Here we're starting with the blue bar is 150, and we're going down 50. So we can divide that blue bar into three 50s. And what we're doing when we go from 150 back down to 100 is we're just getting rid of one of those three 50s. We're going down by one third. Right? So the formula is going to be, we're going down 50, divided by the original 150, times 100, and that simplifies to a third times 100, or down 33.33333333%. What we don't like about this kind of thing when we're doing an elasticity calculation is, if we're studying how a change in one thing, say price, affects a change in another, say how much people buy, then what we really want to do is study those two points, the $100 and the $150. We don't want there to be a difference between the percent change when we do those two calculations. But in this case, when we're going from 100 up to 150, we're calling that a 50% increase. But when we go from 150 back down to 100, we're calling that a 33% decrease. Is there a way to make those two percent changes the same? That's where the midpoint method comes in. So if we look at those exact same two problems, the midpoint formula for a percent change is the same on the top. It's the change, new minus old, divided by, instead of the original number, we divide by the average of the two values. It's the change between the two numbers, or the difference in the two numbers, divided by the average of the two numbers. And then, of course, to make it into a percent, we multiply it times 100. So let's recalculate those two percent changes we looked at before. If we're going from 100 up to 150, then the formula says, look at the change, the plus 50. And instead of dividing that by the original number, the 100, divide it by the average of 100 and 150. So we add them up and we divide by 2. Or we find the midpoint. 
right? This is why we call this a midpoint formula, is we're really asking in the bottom here, 100 plus 150 is 250, divide it by two, you get 125. What we're asking is what's the midpoint between those two numbers, 100 and 150? Well, the midpoint is 125. So 50 divided by 125 times 100 equals 40% change. And we'd call this a 40% increase using the midpoint formula. So the only difference is, instead of dividing by the original number, we're dividing by the average of the two numbers we're talking about. The average of 100 and 150, which is the midpoint halfway between. Now what happens if instead we're going from 150 down to 100? The formula says to take that change, which is we're going down 50, and to divide it by the average of 100 and 150. The same thing. 125 times 100, we'd call that a 40% decrease or a negative 40% change. Again, the benefit here is instead of getting 50% change when we're going up and 33% change when we're going down, we get a 40% change either way when we're using the midpoint formula. Now, anytime you're calculating an elasticity though, of course, we're going to have to calculate two percentage changes. And then we're going to do the ratio of one percentage change by the other, and that will give us our elasticity. Let's do a quick practice problem here. So for any elasticity problem, you're going to have to have two prices and two quantities, or two incomes if it's an income elasticity of demand. So here we have our two prices, 252 and 280. We have our two quantities, and these are real world numbers looking at a change in price and how it affects the quantity demanded of gasoline. So what we're going to need to do is use these two numbers to calculate the percent change in price, these two to calculate the percent change in quantity, and then divide those two. Price elasticity of demand, the first word, that percentage change always goes in the bottom, and the percent change in the quantity demanded here is going to go into the top. So as always, I recommend you pause the video to check to make sure you can do this. Again, we're using the midpoint formula here, which is just the change divided by the average. Let's do percent change in price first. So here what we're going to want is the change in the price between those two values, and then divide it by the average of the two prices. Multiply that times 100. The change in price, since we're going from $2.52 up to $2.80, it's going to be an increase, a positive change. It's just subtraction here, and what we're going to get is 28 cents. So a plus 28 because the price went up 28 cents. And then the average price, we just add those two values, divide by 2, and I get $2.66 times 100. And then on the bottom, what we're going to get is about a 10.53% change in the price. The purpose of the elasticity is to see how large of an effect is that going to have on the amount of gas people are buying. So we're going to have the change in the quantity divided by the average quantity times 100. If we look at these two quantities, the change is going down 230. So minus 230. And to get the average of those two, or the midpoint, add them up and divide by two. And the average of those is 23,915. And to make a percent, multiply times 100. And that percentage change, you should get that it's a little less than a 1% change. So minus 0.96%. So we've just used the midpoint formula twice, once to get the percent change in price, the second time to get the percent change in quantity, and finally, to get the elasticity, we need to divide those, and we're going to end up with a unit-free measure. It's not a percent anymore, because literally what's going to happen is those percents will cancel. And when we do that division, I get about 0.091. And that is the price elasticity of demand for gasoline. And since this number is so close to zero, we're learning here that the price elasticity of demand for gasoline is very inelastic, not very responsive. And what that number would mean is for each 1% change in the price, there's only a 0.091% change in the quantity bought, 
and the negative sign means they move in opposite directions because of the law of demand. Price goes up, the quantity demanded goes down. Price goes down, quantity demanded goes up. So as always, if you have any questions about this, please let me know by posting in the comment section below, and I will talk to you later. Have a great day.